Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new model from Harley Benton, something a little bit different. This is the JA Baritone. It does have a 30 inch scale length, but we'll get more into that in a little bit once we hit the specs of this guitar. As is customary when we do these kinds of videos on this channel, we're going to start off by putting this guitar on the bench, checking out the weight, the specifics of all the parts, and giving a feel for the build quality and quality control that went into making this instrument. Then we're going to give it a playthrough final thoughts. So let's get started by putting this on the bench and immediately diving into this guitar. Now, before we get into the specifics of this guitar, I think it's worth mentioning. I think this is an absolutely gorgeous instrument. I really like the blacked out finish, but the block inlays and the matching headstock just really add a next level kind of touch of class to this guitar. I think it looks really, really good. But as far as the get down of what makes this guitar, this guitar component wise, you have a gloss finish on a poplar body. You do have hardtail bridge here two p90 pickups now it does not specify if these are the roswells or not i know they're not the teslas especially at this price point i would be shocked if that was the case you have a three-way toggle switch no fancy push pulls as they are p90 single coil pickups nothing special with those and yeah one volume one tone and your jack right there pretty straightforward as far as the front of the body goes if we flip it onto the back yeah, you can see I've been playing with it a little bit. One thing about black, doesn't hide fingerprints very well. Um, you just have a string through on the back and your typical Jazzmaster style belly cut on the side. I did mention I wanted to go over some of the quality control of this instrument. And now I do have in my mind here that this was $160 roughly before shipping. So I can't expect something to be flawless like uh, core Paul Reed Smith. However, with that being said, black is susceptible, as I mentioned in the previous segment, to having a little bit of scratches here and there on it. But at the lower bout of this, that's pretty, pretty scratched up. And then there's a ding as well right there. That's not the only place on the body that does have a ding. If I move this guy a little bit closer, very small one right there and nothing really major outside of that. But it has to be said that considering that this guitar is $160, as I mentioned before, these little imperfections are not that bad. And it's something that, especially regarding to the back scratches on it, if I really wanted to buff it out, I could, but this is not a guitar that I purchased to have be a glorified, you know, aesthetic hallmark of the room whatsoever. I wanted a baritone guitar that was affordable, that would play well. So, so long as it does those two things, absolutely given a pass. I just thought it would be transparent as far as the condition that this guitar came to me in. So there are two things that I think stand out on this guitar's neck that are pretty interesting to me. The first being obviously the scale length. There was some sort of discrepancies. There was a typo on, I believe it was Tolman's website stating that this was a 27 inch scale length. That is not the case. This is a 30 inch scale length. So it's full on baritone at that point. Do you have your block inlays? And on the second cool thing, this is a purple heart fingerboard wood and i think that's pretty cool i have not seen that on too many guitars in my time i just felt over the fret edges and feels pretty good nothing that's gonna cut my fingers or anything like that and sometimes when you're in this price range of a guitar you can absolutely find room for improvement when it comes to smoothing these out but there's nothing that is going to actually hurt you or be a hindrance to play so to speak so now we're going to use the fret guru 2 to get a rough check on how level these frets came to me Yeah, this fret's a little high. Beautiful. So we did have a high fret, I believe, right around here, but not so high that it was really seesawing in a very detrimental way. Overall, a really good job with that. Before we move on to the headstock of the guitar, though, I think it is kind of cool. A lot of the guitars in this price range now, and I'm thinking of specifically the TE62s, have a satinish kind of natural finish on it. This one does not. 
This has a gloss finish, but it is not one that is super sticky and really, really oversprayed. This one felt really good in the few minutes that I was playing it, but after I do the demos and do a little bit more excessive playing on this guitar, I'll be able to give you a general idea because probably sweat will be involved. And the last two details of the neck that I'd like to go over here, the fret wire itself is not stainless steel that come on a lot of Harley Benton guitars, but at this price point, if this had stainless steel frets on it, absolutely forget it. These are just regular nickel, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then the final thing in regards to the shape of the neck, this is a slim C but it actually beefs up pretty well as you're going up towards the higher fret axis of the guitar. It was really comfortable in the few minutes that I was messing around with this before I started filming. And at the top of the guitar, we do have the matching headstock. We have two string trees to help with some of the stability going on here. We have a black nut that is not specified on either Tolman's website or on Harley Benton's website. The material that it is made out of, if I had to guess, it is either synthetic or a dyed plastic. We flip it over onto the back here. There's that. I found this interesting. This sticker was already kind of coming off a little bit and you'll just OCD get it out of here while it's there. Oh, now I'm going to need goo gone. Anyways, we do have six clues on style tuners that are non-locking and also black that really go with the overall vibe and aesthetic of the guitar. So my first impressions of this guitar, I was expecting it to weigh a little bit more for one reason or another, but it's only five ounces more than my Fender American Vintage Jazzmaster is. Very comfortable guitar as far as the way the neck really feels in my hands. I like this a lot. I have a feeling I'm gonna have a good time when we sit down and do the sound samples on it. Outside of a few small cosmetic issues, the guitar was really well received and put together very, very decently indeed, especially when you consider the price point again this is a very affordable guitar but it doesn't feel like a cheap guitar so before we get into the sound samples i do want to remind you that this is not a sponsored video this was paid for by me for me entirely so if you do enjoy this and the other videos on this channel i hope that you consider at least hitting the like button on this subscribing is also an added bonus and i do have people that are members of this channel if you would like to help and join be a part of this community as well it makes things like this all the more possible going forward but sales pitch out of the way here we're going to be using the Neural DSP Tone King Imperial for our clean tones and when we get to the dirty sounds it's a baritone we're absolutely going to be testing some fun stuff with that we're going to be using the Soldano also by Neural DSP let's get started
Now, as somebody who never plays a baritone guitar, I had a lot of fun playing that demo, but I did struggle with it at times. It's absolutely not going to be the best, cleanest kind of playing that I put out there. This gauge of strings, man, it takes a little bit of getting used to when you're used to playing 9 through 46 to jump up to 14 to, I believe, 68 here on the thickest string here. But nonetheless, I had this guitar tuned to B. It played great. It stayed in tune really well. I only tuned it once during either of those segments and it was just really reliable guitar. I was able to not focus on, oh, is this thing going to hold up and is this thing actually going to remain in tune, which is not always the case with some guitars and that's regardless of price point. You can get a very high end guitar and if the nuts not cut well on it, you're going to have tuning issues. But I was really happy with this one because when it came down to actually sit and to play with it, I could count on it and I really like it for that aspect as well. But as far as the playability of the instrument itself goes, the neck gloss was no problem whatsoever. It didn't end up being one of those really sticky instances, especially once I started to play aggressively. I was starting to sweat a little bit through my hands. I had no problems as far as being able to move up and down the neck in that aspect, which again, not always the case when you have a high gloss, not nitro finish on the back of a neck. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. Tonally, I loved two positions on this guitar. I thought that the bridge pickup was perfect. I see no reason for this to be altered out unless you just really wanted to go for an extremely different kind of sound. Maybe a humbucker sized P90 or Filtertron or, you know, there's crazy amounts of pickup options out there if that's the route you want to go. The second option I liked leading into that is the middle position of this guitar. I thought works extremely well when it came to the actual clean tones and even a little bit of the distorted tones. I thought, well, that's a pretty cool kind of verse tone switch to the bridge for the full-on raw power when it came down to a chorus or something like that. And really the only reason I didn't enjoy the neck pickup as much as the middle position or the bridge pickup is because it just seemed a little bit muddy on its own. But this is something that you don't even need to replace this pickup, in my opinion, to really kind of improve a little bit. You can always use an EQ, whether it's in a pedal, whether it's on your amp itself, the plugin that you're using, or if you've already recorded the part and something sounds a little bit off, you can use even the seven band EQ that comes stock in a lot of these DAWs as standard procedure equipment to kind of make things stand out a little bit more. It's nothing that I would say has to be replaced immediately and really nothing on this guitar would need to be replaced immediately in my book this is a very well put together instrument now as far as the switch and the volume and tone pots go there wasn't any static there wasn't any sort of unwanted noises when switching positions or tapering on and off of the volume and tones and that's always a good sign but I really enjoy this guitar. I think that is a lot of fun to play and it is a breath of fresh air for me. I do have several other instruments that I play and they each have their own unique qualities to them. When you switch back and forth, I absolutely notice a difference. But when it comes to a guitar like this, the fact that the string gauge is so much bigger and the scale length is four and a half inches more than a Fender 25 and a half inch scale length on it, it really brings out different kinds of my playing. I feel like this is a very useful tool, not just for having a lot of gain on it because a lot of people they'll see this and they'll immediately associate using high gain with it. I think that you can add a lot of textures, a lot of kind of low lines to your songs in the clean or a little bit of modulation on a secondary guitar part with something like this and it would really put some things over the top. Overall, things awesome. I really like it. Let's talk about some of the competition though, where the prices are at that. As of filming this video, I was checking and doing a little bit of research on what I believe is a very, very good competitor to this guitar, another baritone guitar that I had demoed before on this channel in the past, and that is the Squire Cabronita baritone. That guitar now is $520 new before tax in the United States. I'm not sure of the actual pricing in Europe, but that being said, this guitar to my door was $220. Do I think, having played both of these guitars, that there is a $300 plus dollar difference between them? Absolutely not. But one thing to keep in mind here when you're comparing those two specific guitars 
This one is absolutely bulkier, not just due to the body size itself, but it actually weighed a bit more than the Telecaster style body, which makes sense because it's a little bit smaller. So maybe if you were a smaller person, the Cabernita Thin Line or the Cabernita Baritone, that might be something that would be a little bit easier for you to get along with and playing it. But even me, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I'm only five foot eight. I have no problems playing this guitar and feeling pretty comfortable with it. Wasn't super heavy, really, really cool guitar. And I actually think it held tune better and it felt more tight than the Squire did. That was one thing I complained about when I did the Cabernita review. It felt just, I don't know, a little bit loose overall. Like I didn't trust the bridge on it. This one feels much more substantial. And yeah, just not that much in it other than that. Really up for taste. These are really cool. I'm unfortunately aware that they're not really available at the moment from Toman. It says 14 to 18 weeks in the event that you wanted to order one and you missed the first initial runs of this guitar. But I would say it's absolutely worth it. No brainer at this price. Really cool guitar. Yeah, not much more needs to be said. But that concludes our overview of the J.A. Baritone by Harley Benton. Really did a great job with this specific guitar, and I'm very happy with it. I do have an affiliate link with Tolman. If you would like to purchase anything from them, and you're going to do it anyways, you can at least help your buddy Jim out here and click on the link down below. I think I get one penny per dollar that you spend on that. And eventually, you know, maybe we'll be able to get a free Harley Benton guitar later down the road. But that's not what this is about. This was a fun guitar. I definitely highly recommend when these do come back in stock. If you have the availability to be able to get one financially, definitely jump on it before they inevitably do sell out again who knows maybe this will become like that squire base six that was a 300 new now you see them on reverb for like 900 bucks market makes no sense not gonna waste any more of your time thank you for watching this video leave me a like comment let me know what you think about this and other than that i'll see you on the next video take it easy everybody